Well, hello everybody and welcome to Midweek Communion on day one of our second lockdown here in England. Uh, from, the, from now on for the next month, all our church services will be coming to you online and hopefully just for a month and in December we can be back to normal. So I hope you're okay and uh, are following all the government instructions and are staying positive despite uh, the difficulties we're facing at the moment. So let's begin, shall we, uh, with our communion service. If you know the words, please do join in with them. And if you want to follow the gospel reading in your own Bibles, it's going to be from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. So let's begin with the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few moments of quiet before we confess our sins together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now today's collect. Almighty and eternal God, you have kindled the flame of love in the hearts of the saints. Grant to us the same faith and power of love, that as we rejoice in their triumphs, we may be sustained by their example and fellowship. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, our Gospel reading for today comes from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. Now, all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Or, what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbours, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Luke chapter 15 is uh, a chapter of three parables. We read two of them just now. The parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost coin, and the parable of the lost son, sometimes known as the prodigal son. So it's a, parable, it's a chapter uh, very much on the theme of lost and found. And I want to just focus for a few moments this morning on the second of those three parables, the parable of the woman who loses a coin, because of all the three of them, that's probably the one that we think about the least in my opinion. And I often wonder about this woman, who she was. 
Uh, was she old or young? Was she a widow? Did she have a family? Did she have children? Uh, I'd really like to know a lot more about her and a bit more about the circumstances in which she lost this coin, which was very, very valuable, one of 10 silver coins that she had. So clearly this, these coins were not 10p pieces or even pound coins. They were something much, much more valuable than that. Possibly they constituted her whole life savings on which she was depending to live. In those days, of course, there was no social security, no universal credit, nothing like that. And so maybe these coins uh, were her, her means of survival in a hard, harsh world of those days. And she loses one of them. And the Bible tells us that she lights a lamp and sweeps the house. In other words, she gives the house a complete spring clean in order to try and find this lost coin. And she finds it. I don't know where she finds it, maybe behind the sofa down a crack in the sofa and a crack in the floorboards. I really have no idea. But she finds it and she rejoices and calls in all her friends and neighbours uh, to rejoice with her and they have what I imagine is a, a really big party. It's a really nice story. And it's a great picture of God because it tells us that God is someone who is constantly seeking out the lost. Now, when I talk about the lost, I expect most of us immediately think about people who are spiritually lost, people who have no personal faith in God and who are very, 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 very far from him. We can probably all think of maybe members of our family, our friends, neighbours, work colleagues, all kinds of people who we regard as being lost in that sense. And God actively seeks them out uh, and is always working to try and cause them to come to him in faith and uh, re receive him for themselves. But we mustn't fall into the trap of thinking that this parable is only about them, because all of us from time to time can get spiritually lost. Uh, it's very, very easy, as I'm sure you know, as, as I do, to, to drift away from God, maybe for a year or a couple of years or more, maybe to drift away just for a, a month or a week or a day, or even a couple of hours during the course of a day, just to drift away from God. And in that sense, for a while, we are ourselves lost. And God is actively trying to seek us out as well and to bring us back to him. Uh, we often tend to think that it's all stuff that we do. We have to try and seek God and we have to try and find him. And that is true. We do have to do that. But we mustn't forget that also we have a God who is also actively seeking us when we are lost. And that's a wonderful thought, I think as we meet together this morning. So now we're going to come to our intercessions. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this first day of another lockdown, we want to bring so many issues related to this to you this morning. We want to pray for all those who work in our National Health Service, in all its different branches, and uh, manifestations. We pray for those who are ill currently with the coronavirus or who are self-isolating at home. We pray for those who are feeling lonely and cut off, for those feeling fearful and anxious for the future, fearing they may lose their jobs or their livelihoods. We pray for those for whom that has already happened we pray for schools and colleges as they continue to remain open, that our children and our teachers and lecturers will remain safe and that transmission through those uh, means may be reduced. We pray for our government and all who advise them. And we pray for all those working for a vaccination and drugs that will ease the problems of this disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for our friends over the, over the other side of the Atlantic in the United States as they continue to work through the results of the US election. We pray for a swift conclusion to the uncertainty and for the man of your choice to become president of that country. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for other parts of the world in need at the moment, and we think especially today of uh, Turkey and Greece following the earthquake last week, for those who have lost loved ones and lost homes, for all the aid agencies working to relieve suffering, and for the many other areas of the world who have suffered from disasters, who are no longer in the news, but where suffering is still a real issue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves, for our friends and families and neighbours. We pray especially for those we know who currently are spiritually lost and struggling in that sense. In a moment of quiet, we bring to God any people whom we know who are in any kind of need this morning and need to know the peace and presence of God in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And again, in some silence, we pray for ourselves and bring to God this morning any particular requests we may have, things that are worrying us, people who are concerning us, or maybe we want to give thanks for something good that has happened in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in your tender mercy gave your only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, merciful Father, we humbly pray, and grant that we, receiving these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine, according to your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Now let us pray with confidence as our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. No, I haven't had to do this for a while, but now I'm going to take communion, the bread and the wine, on your behalf, and on behalf of the whole congregation. And while I'm doing that, there'll be some silence, and perhaps you'd just like to reflect on the Gospel reading, and just ask God to be present to you in a very real and special way this morning. the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, in a few moments, I will pronounce <clears throat> the final blessing. But before I do that, just to say thank you very much for joining me this morning for this short service of Midweek Holy Communion. On Sunday, there will be uh, a service which we will record in the church and put onto the Facebook page on Sunday morning, round about 11 o'clock, hopefully. It'll be a short service which includes an act of remembrance for uh, Remembrance Sunday. And in the meantime... I hope that you will stay well and you stay positive. We may be in lockdown, but God is still God and uh, we are still believers and the Holy Spirit is still with us. And most of all, Jesus Lord, Jesus Christ our Lord is still risen from the dead and still working amongst us. So stay positive. And now the final blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all whom you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <clears throat>